Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the last problem of today's bi-weekly contest, create components with same value. The problem states that you are given an unrelated tree with n nodes. Each node has some value and you have to delete some edges. Now if you delete edges, you will be getting some connected components. So here let's say you delete this edge and this edge. There are three components, one with index 0, second with index 4 and third with index 1, 2 and 3. Now the value of each component is the sum of value of all the nodes. So the value of this component is 6, 2 plus 2 plus 2. Value of this component is 6 and value of this component is 6. Now basically you have to find out the maximum number of edges that you can delete such that every component that gets formed has the same value. So in this example we can delete at most two edges such that there are three components formed and each of them has same value which is 6. So hence the answer is 2. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now again instead of solving this problem where we have to delete the maximum number of edges, let's try to solve the problem where or let's try to solve the reduced problem. The problem that we will be solving is given a tree, just tell whether we can divide it into some component such that sum of each component is x. So let's take, let's say for example, x is 4. Okay, so we need to find out or we need to return either true or false. If, a, if we can divide this tree into some components such that the sum of each component has value 4. Okay, now let's try to solve this one first and we will look at the original problem later. So now you have to like you know each component will have value 4. And so this 1 1 are the values of each of these nodes. I haven't shown the indexes because that would like that will make things a bit uh, tied, uh, untidy here. So each of these nodes have value 1 and we have to find we have to say we have to find out whether we can divide it into components such that each component will have value 4. Now let's look at the or let's start from the uh, base node or the leaf nodes. Okay, so this has value 1. Now if this node has value 1, can this form a single component? Answer is no because each component should have value 4. So this doesn't form a one component. Now if this doesn't form a one component, what is the only possible choice? Only possible choice is to merge this with the parent, right? There is no other combination for this leaf node. This leaf node either can contribute itself, can stay by itself, or it can merge with the parent. So we, we have noticed that this one can't stay by itself because we want every component to have value 4. So only possible uh, choice we have left is to merge this with parent. So it will be contributing 1 to the parent. Okay. Now for the second node, like le let's try with the another leaf node. So for this leaf node again, this has value 1. So will it contribute, like will it be okay by itself? The answer is no. So it will be contributing 1 to the parent. Okay. Now again for this one the answer is no. So it will be contributing again 1 to the parent. Now notice that we have taken care of these three leaf nodes. So in a way what we have said that this and the parent will belong to same component. Then we come here and we say this and the parent will, become, will, will belong to the same component. And then we come here and say this and the parent will belong to the same component. Now we have processed all the leaf nodes of this. So this, what is the total contribution here? Total contribution here is 4. Why 4? 3 comes from the children and 1 by itself. So now this 4. Can this 4 will stay by itself? The answer is yes because 
we know that each component should have value 4 and this component have value 4 so it can stay by itself so we can remove this uh, like we can remove this edge because we know whatever we have contributed till now has value 4 so in a way this will contribute 0 to the parent okay so now let's continue let's this, this is the leaf node so can this leaf node be stay by itself the answer is no so it will contribute 1 to the parent now this is the leaf node can this leaf node be stay by itself answer is no so this will contribute 1 now this here the value is 2 can this 2 can stay by itself the answer is no so it will contribute 2 to the parent notice that it now it is not contributing 1 it is contributing 2 why because we have said that these two will remain together so these these two can't stay out of each other so and now we are saying that this and this can't stay out of each other so in a way we are saying that these three can't stay out of each other so this will be contributing 2 to the parent now finally in the parent we get 2 1 and 1 was there so we get 4 so because 4 is equals to 4 it means that there we found another component which have value 4 so we will return 0 to its parent so there is no parent so if like we basically we say that okay we got out and we get a final value of 0 it means there is a possible split such that each component has value 4 okay so let's just try one more example case so that will make things a bit more clear let's say instead of 4 this time we want to find the x is like instead of 4 the x is 2 this time okay now let's start from here this is 1 can this stay by itself the answer is no so it will contribute 1 to the parent okay by what again contribution 1 means this node and this node will stay each, will stay together because this node can't stay alone because we want final value to be 2 now here the value is 2 so can this 2 stay by itself the answer is yes because we want every component to have value 2 and we found the component which have value 2 so it means this component is one component and this will return 0 to the parent okay now let's start with here it is 1 so it can't stay by itself so it will return 1 to the parent okay now this is 1 it can't stay by itself so it will return 1 to the parent again this will return 1 and this will also return 1 now finally here we get 4 so can 4 stay by itself the answer is no because we want 2 but 4 itself is greater than 2 so whatever we will add we will get something greater than 4 so we can't split what does it mean it means that we found a component that we can't split which each component have value 2 so we found a unsplittable component which have value 4 and because of this the answer would straight be no because like the final answer will be no because there is no way we can split this tree into components such that everyone has value 2 okay so hope this solution makes sense so what we have just solved we have solved whether like given a tree whether we can split the tree such that each component has value x we found that now if you remember the original problem states that we need to find the maximum number of edges we can delete so if we have found a component which have value 4 so can you just say how many components would have been there so total is 8 total sum of all the nodes is 8 and we say that okay we found a way to split it into components such that each component has value 4 so how many components would have been formed 2 right now if 2 components have been formed how many edges would have been removed 1 right because whenever you remove one edge two components get formed so if you remove two edge three components get formed okay 
so basically <coughs> sorry so basically we are removing like if we are saying that some x is possible it means that sum by x minus 1 number of edges can be removed right so hope this makes sense now only thing that remains is we iterate like sum is the constant right and one is also constant the variable is x so let's just iterate over every possible x and apply the algorithm if the algorithm returns true we will uh, take this value of the expression and compare it with the current maximum result so hope the solution is clear let's look at the pseudo code uh, for this uh, function which returns that whether target is possible or not so what we are doing initially we start with uh, uh, like what we have done like we, we start we, we start with the children's right so we go to all the children and we just call DFS and wait for what they are returning whatever they are returning we accumulate it in the variable total now if total is equal to target we return 0 because we found a component that has value target otherwise we return total so finally from the root we will be either getting 0 or some value x like or like some value x dash so if we return if we get 0 it means that there is a possible way to split into components such that every component has value target and if we get something else it means there is no no possible way to split such that every component has value target now once you find this the the next thing is to iterate over x okay now let's look at the time complexity uh, or maybe before let's look at the code and then we'll look at the time complexity so this dfs function is exactly similar to what we have just saw, just seen in the pseudo code we are iterating over the children accumulating the value if value is target we return zero otherwise we return value now this is just initialization stuff we are initializing uh, array the adjacency list and the sum now we are iterating over all the possible values of x so if you remember this was the equation right now all possible values of x we are iterating over it and we are checking whether sum by x is an integer or not if this is not integer there is no point in checking the value of x with the dfs so that's what we are checking we are if if some modulus part is not zero we will continue otherwise we will call dfs with sum by parts so these many parts we are trying to divide so what is the value for each part each part would be sum by parts so if this value is not zero it means there is no possible way to split it into uh, such that each value is sum by parts so we'll continue otherwise we will take the maximum with the result so now let's look at the time complexity of the solution so time complexity would simply be how many times we are calling dfs so each time we call dfs it requires order n time right so time complexity would simply be how many times we are calling dfs so how many times we are calling dfs let's say if you haven't applied this uh, if condition so in total we will be calling dfs n number of times so complexity would become order n square and n is up to 2 into 10 to the power 4 so this n square will not pass so this condition is actually uh, like actually optimizing this uh, entire solution so how much this is optimizing so this condition like what is x x is a factor of sum right so in a way we need to find how many factors of a particular number sum is possible let's say sum is 36 okay so how many factors of 36 are there you need to find out that so let's say you factorize 36 so you factorize 36 into x into y right so initially x is 1 y is 36 then x becomes 2 y become 18 right 
and then x become 3 y becomes 12 and so on and so forth now notice that here x is increasing and y is decreasing right so there will be a time when they will be closest to each other so in this case that time would be 6 into 6 in particular it will be uh, around root n where this 2x and y will be closest to each other now let's say 6 is the place where they are closest to each other so if you want to find out the factor of 36 whatever value whatever divisor you found out before 6 you will get one mirror after 6 so for 1 it will be 36 right so for 2 it will be 18 for 3 it will be 12 and then for 4 it will be 9 right and then for 5 there is nothing and for 6 it will be 6 so notice this thing so up to root n whatever you are getting after root n you are getting a replica of that okay so what is the like how many uh, factors are possible in worst case it will be 2 into root n right so root n let's say in worst case everything here is a factor up to root n so after root n there are at most root n factors right so in total there are two root n factors now what is the value of sum the value of sum is 50 into 2 into 10 to the power 4 which is 10 to the power 6 so what is the value of root n it is 1000 right so in total there are 2000 uh, factors possible and if you call this function 2000 times it will not exceed time limit and that is what that is why this condition is very important okay so hope you got the solution if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below i will be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i will see you tomorrow thank you